We'll pause for a few minutes as folks join. If you are a task force member and you are joining um, and you see your name, um, if you could add your um, organization or agency next to your name, it would be much appreciated. You'll be joining on mute this morning, but we would love if you could have your video on. We'll provide some instructions for that as well. Folks are still joining the webinar here. We're going to give another minute or so before we get started. Again, it's great to see everyone this morning. Okay, it looks like we have a good number of folks who have joined us today. Uh, we will get started um, with our agenda. I'd like to welcome both the task force members and the public to the BOEM California Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Task Force meeting. My name is Jenna Torje Maldonado. I'm with Kearns and West. I'll be your facilitator this morning. I'm joined by Eunice Lee, Bushra Banji, and Kayla Kelly Slatten on the facilitation team. Our role is to help manage the meeting and prepare a summary. I would ask task force members to check your name. If your name is incorrect, please rename yourself by clicking on the three dots next to your name in the participant list. Or you can um, reach out to our technical team Hi. and we can um, help you with that as well. And we ask that folks stay muted through the webinar until we get to the, uh, the uh, task force discussion and question section and we'll have a queue where folks can raise their hand and we'll unmute you as our team. I'll have us go to the next slide here. And as we begin, I'm gonna briefly walk through the Zoom webinar instructions and guidance. These instructions are specific to task force members as panelists. You have a few options at the bottom of your Zoom window. During the task force clarifying questions and discussion, you can click on the mute unmute button to speak. Please use the raised hand icon to enter the discussion queue, and you can lower your hand once you're done speaking. You can always ask for technical support using the chat feature also at the bottom of your screen. We encourage task force members to keep your video on when you're speaking. Attendees and members of the public will be able to see your face and identify the speaker if your video is on and it's helpful for all attendees. Closed captioning is available at the bottom right of your Zoom webinar screen with the two CC, um, the, the two CC letters as well. On the next slide, um, I'll note some Zoom instructions for members of the public. Uh, because this is not a federal advisory committee, only governmental agencies are able to be included. Um, however, BOEM has set up an opportunity for members of the public to attend the meeting, ask clarifying questions, and provide input after the meeting is adjourned around 12 to 1 p.m. This will be the main opportunity for members of the public to provide input and ask questions on topics related to the task force meeting. We encourage all task force members to remain on the webinar to hear public input. If you encounter technical issues during the webinar, you may message Eunice Lee using the chat box at the bottom right of your screen. Participants will be muted throughout the webinar and will not be able to unmute themselves. There will be a public input opportunity at the end of the task force meeting where you'll have the opportunity to provide uh, verbal input. At this point, um, we will individually unmute you. I do want to note that this meeting is being recorded and will be available for viewing in the weeks following the task force meeting. On the next slide here, we just have a quick note again on if you are encountering, encountering technical difficulties, um, you could reach out by email or through chat for uh, the task force. Um, and on, this, on the next slide here, um, I sorry, I forgot to note that if you are a call-in user, you can dial star nine and we can identify you and help you with any technical difficulties you might have. On the next slide here, um, I do want to walk through a few process guidelines as we get started this morning. I'll refer to these throughout the meeting. The first is to honor the agenda. Um, we'll stay on track. I'll guide us through the agenda. I would ask that folks participate actively and respectfully. 
will speak in order. All as the facilitator will mind the cue. We ask that folks speak clearly into the mic or your phone for others to hear you. And as you are speaking, provide your name and affiliation each time you speak. And please select the mute and unmute button on your audio into the phone um, and mute when you're not speaking as well. If we can go to the next slide, I'll be um, inviting our uh, BOEM and state officials to provide opening remarks. But first, we want to acknowledge the importance of tribal nations in this intergovernmental task force and in the broader offshore wind planning process. The federal and state agencies will continue to engage with tribes as sovereign governments. I will now turn it over first to Director Lefton to provide welcome and opening remarks. Director Lefton, over to you. Well, good morning. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for running that through. It's wonderful to be here with you today, everyone. Uh, as already stated, my name is Amanda Lefton. I am the director of the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, of course, the lead agency for offshore wind in the federal government. And I say, of course, we are lead, but we have many important partners uh, with, with many others on the line today. And just to name a few, but of course, work in close partnership with NOAA, with the Army Corps, with the Department of Defense, with the Coast Guard, many other federal entities. And importantly, uh, we really are very proud of our strong partnership with the state of California and are very grateful for Karen and her terrific leadership uh, in her previous position at the CEC and really furthering that uh, on behalf of the governor. So with that, I wanna welcome everybody. Uh, of course, this is our first Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Task Force meeting for California in almost a year. And we've made an extraordinary amount of progress on making offshore wind a reality off of California's coasts over the last year. And so really our main focus today is we are going to discuss the proposed sale notice and outline next steps for offshore wind for the North and Central Coasts. As we all know, of course, BOEM is, is really working hard and in playing a central role in implementing the Biden-Harris agenda uh, to, to deploy 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. In this last year, we've approved the nation's first two offshore wind sales, uh, offshore wind projects, the Vineyard Wind Run Project and South Fork Wind, both of which are under construction now. We also announced a new offshore wind leasing strategy, and this was really the first time BOEM released a roadmap of the region's under considerations and potential timeframes for option for offshore wind. And really what we're doing here is we're trying to remove the guesswork and inspire confidence among ocean users about where we're heading. And this plan included up to seven new offshore wind lease sales by 2025 two of which we've already held. Uh, we had the historic New York Bight auction in February and the Carolina Long Bay sale last month. And of course, importantly, why we're here today is we are advancing as part of that leasing strategy, a sale off the coast of California for later this year. And because of how much we've learned off the Atlantic, in the Atlantic, we're really posed, poised to move forward well with the offshore wind energy process in the Pacific. Last week, BOEM announced the proposed sale notice, which was published in the Federal Register. And really what this does is the proposed sale notice gives everyone a first look at the lease sale terms and provides a public comment period. And so excitingly, what the proposed sale notice included was potential new stipulations that are really meant to drive towards our shared goals and the Biden-Harris administration goals of ensuring that as we move forward to fight climate change, we're creating good paying jobs and investment opportunities for communities all across the country. So some potential lease stipulations include a new bidding credit for community benefit agreements focus on the fishing industry, project labor agreements as a requirement to make every reasonable effort in a lease stipulation, direct investments in domestic supply chain and infrastructure that's necessary to facilitate offshore wind, and of course, enhanced stakeholder engagement requirements to ensure that environmental justice communities and disadvantaged communities, as well as important ocean users like the commercial fishing industry 
are at the table from the very beginning. And importantly, um, particularly to BOEM and I know our state partners, ensuring that tribal nations um, really continue to be at the table from the very beginning of these processes and play an important role in our government to government consultation. And truly, the great BOEM team through Sarah and Marty will discuss these, uh, these, these stipulations later today in greater detail throughout the course of this meeting. Currently, as proposed, BOEM will offer two lease areas offshore northern, northern California around Humboldt and three lease areas offshore Central California, Morro Bay. These areas will greatly contribute to California reaching its goal of carbon-free energy by 2045. And of course, this aligns closely with the AB 525 report released on Wednesday. AB 525 would specifically set offshore wind production goals of three gigawatts of electricity by 2030 and 10 gigawatts by 2040. Here at BOEM, uh, we are very committed to continuing to work with the state to achieve these goals. And of course, we know that here on the West Coast, floating wind is really what's gonna drive offshore wind and help us reach those deeper waters which were once thought unobtainable. But in fact, California's offshore wind projects will be in deeper waters than any projects planned overseas. This, this really puts the state in a position to become a leader in offshore wind floating technology. To seize this opportunity, we need to develop a robust supply chain and secure investment in floating technology, and California is ready to lead. And in fact, we know that those investments are already being made, including over in the Humboldt port, which is nearby one of these wind energy areas. Truly, these are exciting times for offshore wind energy development. We're well on the way to building a new cleaner energy industry. And we're excited to move this process forward with our California stakeholders. We're committed to maintaining open and transparent communication with all ocean users and stakeholders and value this important opportunity for engagement. We recognize the importance of the commercial, recreational, and traditional fishing to the Pacific Coast, and that's why we remain committed to working with the fishing industry as this process moves forward. We're also working to improve our consultation process and strengthen our relationship with tribal governments. We will consult with federally recognized tribes on the proposed sale notice, and continue to partner with state on engagement with all California and Native American tribes. All of you have valuable expertise on the issues facing this region. Your participation in these task force meetings will help inform and make the first Pacific offshore wind auction process a success later this year. Thanks again to everybody for attending today's task force meeting. We look, we look forward to learning from you all. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Director Lefton. Um, I will now turn it over to uh, Karen Douglas, Senior Advisor for Energy for the Office of the Governor. Hi, Karen, well, over thank, to you. thank you very much. And um, welcome everybody as well to this task force meeting. Um, thank you, Director Lefton, for your comments and for your partnership over the years. Um, I'm I'm currently the, the senior advisor for energy for the governor until just a couple months ago, I was on the energy commission and um, working very much um, uh, in the forefront of a tremendous amount of state engagement um, on the offshore wind effort. And I really appreciate this opportunity to help open up this task force meeting. And um, focus a bit on and just continue some of the great work and partnership that has has moved forward and really begun with the first task force meeting held back in 2016. Um, so again, appreciate the close coordination and partnership with Director Lefton and the BOEM team in the Pacific region. Um, back in uh, May of 2021, the governor and the White House jointly announced an agreement that opened a pathway for offshore wind on the Central Coast. And since then, there's been a lot of activity and um, a lot of progress in this space, including BOEM completing an additional call 
on the Central Coast uh, energy areas for both Humboldt and Morro Bay, and now the first proposed lease sale for the West Coast. Um, on the state side, the California Coastal Commission has been um, very deeply engaged in processing their first consistency reviews of BOEM's proposed leasing actions, um, doing that uh, with a strong team of support from other state agencies as well. And the California Energy Commission in its work to implement AB 525 uh, and develop a strategic plan for offshore wind has done some really good organizing and analysis around where we need to be going broadly um, for offshore wind in the state. So across state government, we've seen this very strong engagement. We've also seen a very strong commitment, not only to working together and with our federal partners, but also the consultation with Native American tribes, the work and engagement with stakeholders and local governments and local communities, and a real effort to understand what the offshore wind industry can bring to California and how we need to engage um, to bring this forward in the best possible way, understanding the really important um, considerations being brought forward by diverse stakeholders and, and um, communities as well. So um, I very much look forward to hearing the discussion today and the comments and reactions from task force members and um, the next steps in the leasing process. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen um, and Director Lefton for providing those uh, welcoming and opening remarks here. Um, we can go on to the next slide here. Um, I would like to just reiterate for this meeting our objectives for today. We're here to provide an update to the task force members on activities re relevant to offshore wind energy since the July 2021 task force meeting and provide task force members with information on the California proposed sale notice or the PSN and outline next steps for offshore wind off California's north and central coasts, including opportunities to provide input into the process through the anticipated lease sale. If we can go to the next slide here, I'll do a brief overview of the agenda. We just finished the webinar instructions and guidance, moving into the welcome opening remarks and our agenda review. I'll soon turn it over to Boehm to discuss the offshore wind activities update, the overview of the PSN, proposed bidding credits and auction format, and next steps. We'll have about 30 minutes for the task force questions and comments on the PSN. We'll have other task force updates um, with a 10 to 15 minute break in the middle. We'll return to our updates and task force clarifying questions. We'll then have closing remarks and close the task force meeting. At this point, we will have a public input opportunity. And of course, we encourage all members of the task force to stay on for the public input opportunity. We can go to the next slide. Um, as we move to introduce the task force members, I want to pause and again, acknowledge the public who is attending today. Um, because we are using the Zoom webinar to allow task force members to be panelists, there are limitations to what tools attendees can use on the webinar feature, but we want to give you more insight into who is attending today. Um, so depending on your Zoom, uh, the Zoom uh, platform that you have or the update that you have, you should be able to hover over the top left of the Zoom screen to see how many people are in attendance today. I'm going to do that right now and just quickly share um, how many folks I see. I see about 73 panelists and 200, uh, currently 298 folks joining as attendees. Um, we'll be posting who attended on the BOEM website following the meeting so folks can see who's here. Um, and Zoom doesn't allow us to do that during the meeting. Um, we'll also have two quick polls to help folks identify who is here today. We'll start with the first poll now. And the question we're asking of attendees is what sector do you represent? So a poll should pop up on your screen here. Um, if you are a panelist or task force member, you won't be able to answer, but this is for um, folks to see who's joining as an attendee. 
So the options are community-based organization, academia, government, non-government organization, tribal slash indigenous, business slash industry, press, and other. So we'll give folks a moment to join here and respond to the question. Okay. We now have about 301 folks on. We have um, about 225 people who have responded to the question. We'll give another moment. These people are still actively responding to the poll. All right, so we have, um, we will end the poll now and share the results. We have about 240 folks who responded. You can see the results here. Um, the largest sector that we have um, self-identifying as attending today is business and industry, followed by government, non-government organization, other, and then we have um, community-based organizations, academia, tribal indigenous, um, press, and others joining as well. So I'll stop that share. Um, we have one other poll today, and that poll is for um, just to check in if folks are planning on providing public input um, after the meeting adjourned today. So um, the question is, do you plan on providing public input? And this just gives us a good estimate um, for how many folks will be providing that input. Do a quick pause here. Wonderful. So we have about 20 folks saying that they will be providing input. We'll ask again later um, for folks to raise their hand as well. All right, wonderful. Um, thank you so much for uh, responding to those polls and just um, uh, participating in the meeting today. So given the size of the task force, we're not gonna do individual introductions. Instead, we will show slides containing the names of task force member bodies or organizations. We'll start with tribal representatives and follow that with state and federal officials and elected officials. Please note that several changes have been made uh, recently regarding the task force membership. BOEM has been updating the task force member roster with the changes and posted an updated roster yesterday on June 2nd. As a reminder, the task force is an intergovernmental body regarding membership. It's not a stakeholder advisory body chartered under the Federal Advisory Committee Act. The public is invited to attend the task force meetings. Um, and as in past meetings, BOEM will for the public the opportunity to participate um, at the end of the meeting as well. Okay, so I'm gonna have us go through um, a few slides here, just sharing who is um, on the task force. If we can go to the next slide. We have um, our BOEM team represented here, and I'll pause briefly for folks to see who's here. Okay, on the next slide, we have our tribal governments, and I'll pause briefly for folks to view who's um, on the task force from our tribal governments. Okay, next slide. We have our state and federal task force members. Wonderful, and last but not least, the next slide here, we have our elected officials and local governments. And I'll pause on this slide as it's a bit dense here. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. And now that we are finished with introductions, I'd like it to turn it over to Sarah Giltanon and Marty Hines from BOEM. Before I do, I'd like to remind task force members that there will be a lot of information provided during this time, but we'll have an extended opportunity for task force members to ask clarifying questions and discussion following the presentation and again, following our break. 
Um, so Sarah, I'll turn it over to you. 